again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. And thank you for turning tuning in today. Um, we are taping this on Tuesday, September 17th. Today is primary day in Manchester. It is. And that's why indeed. we chose to do some Facebook Live so that we could reach out to people who maybe were being complacent about voting or didn't know where you know that they were even supposed to vote today or whatnot. So today, yes, primary voting, but if you are watching this. On any other day but Tuesday. <laughs> Don't go and disregard vote. Disregard anything that has to do with elections. <laughs> right. Again, keep in mind that most of the things we're talking about, today, because it is a municipal primary and we have nonpartisan elections, what that basically means is when you go in, it's not going to tell you who's Republican or Democrat or undeclared. Um, and we have citywide primaries in three races. That would be for the mayor's race, the alderman at large race, and the school committee at large race. And then... Um, there are some ward level um, primaries. I know there's a alderman primary in ward five, I believe, and an alderman primary 11. in ward seven, and an alderman in seven. So, oh, and school seven, eleven, and school committee in ward six. So those wards have a little bit more activity than the rest of them um, because there's more things to vote for. But even if um, even if you don't have a ward level, it's really still important to get out and vote. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the races and some of the candidates. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's important. Why is it important to get out and vote? Well, not only because you should be involved in what's sort of happening in community, but because we know we have a whole bunch of people who are running who are like, eh, tax cap. Who yeah. cares? Oh my goodness. Well, that's what I was. I, <laughs> and it's like I care. I care a lot. <laughs> I care a lot about the tax cap, and I'm going to say this because I I always feel the need to remind people. So in 2009, when we collected all those signatures to get the tax cap on the ballot, which was Thank approved. Thank you, Tammy. You're welcome. Um, a third of the people who voted to put the tax cap on the ballot were Democrats. Oh, yeah. A third were undeclared. So this is the tax cap and, and um, you know, keeping spending within a reasonable amount of growth is not a Republican-only issue by any means. Everybody's money means something to them. Um, you know, it, it's not that... Republicans want to spend no money. We just want to be responsible and be conscious of the fact that you are literally stealing money from people who earned money and spending it. And not everybody wants their money spent faster than they can earn it. Well, that and then also, I mean, I want to sort of go back to a basic principles, right? And so one of the things that I believe is that I think it's wrong to take people's money and to spend it on things that those people don't want, right? Right. So, I mean, it's sort of a fancy way of saying taxation is yeah, theft. It is. Um, but the problem, I think, or the challenge we face at this stage, and this is why maybe some fresh blood would be good, yeah. is just we can't keep doing the same thing. Over like, and I mean, over and honestly, over. Honestly, you know, yeah, it's I, just I, not working. I would. I have to agree. I would. I can say. You know, I've lived in Manchester for I don't know, 25, 30 years. I don't even know since ninety seven. So <laughs> ninety seven. That's thirty yeah. years, right? Yeah, almost. I don't know. A long time. Twenty eight um, years. So. I've watched aldermanic boards, you know, come and go. I mean, we haven't had a Republican majority on the aldermanic board in probably two decades. So when people blame Republicans for things, I'm like, you realize we haven't been in charge for a long time. We've had Republican mayors, and we sure we have some Republican aldermen, but we haven't had a majority where we're actually setting the tone and, you know, shifting the, the gears um, in probably 20 years. Um, but... The, the thing is, is when I think back, there's very few instances where you think, wow, that's such a, like, vibrant idea. I mean, Tim Baines, who didn't, chose not to run because he needed to run his business and whatnot, um, he was, like, out of the box thinking a little right. bit. You know, it's refreshing to hear somebody say, no, we need to do this, or no, we need to think differently. And every once in a while we get, you know, somebody in there who, Phil Grazzo, I mean, silly was... things that weren't the most critical things in the world, but... Hot, trick or treating on Halloween. Trick I or mean, treating on is Halloween. that too much to ask for? You know, or you know, things. I mean, and why does something like that irk me? It irks me because, like, why does the government think right. to be like, oh, we're going to change the date you know, of when things happen because, when you look, ooh, when, and it's like, you know what, just buzz off. When you look at the makeup of the current aldermanic board, you know, when was the last time Dan O'Neill had a vibrant, exciting new idea? 
I can't honestly say. Um, you know, Joyce Craig as mayor, when she was alderman, it's the same old, same old, same old. They, you talk, everybody I mean, talks. everyone sort of dials it in, right? Right, they're like, oh, I'm going to do all these good things, and I'm going to override the tax cap, and I'm going to, you know, fund teachers, and I'm going to give everybody raises and better contracts for I mean, How place. about this? I'm not going to look into why the DEA and the police shot and killed some people. No, I'm really, like, have. waiting for when the AG's office is going to circle back with that details. Shocking prediction, folks. <laughs> They're not gone. It's going to be after the elections That's right. in That's November. Right. I predict a December slide through on that kind of information. The the trespassing, I mean, Tim, as you mentioned, Baines had some good yeah. ideas, right? So let's make it a uh, serious trespass. Yep. I know a lot of people are talking about bail reform. Yep. And, yeah. and, and there's this sort of cycle where everyone's like, the police are unhappy, you know? And I'm like, look, the way it should work is... Um, we should say if you commit a real property crime, you're going to have to do some time. So right. if you're a junkie and you're stealing, you're going to have to go to jail because you're taking people's stuff. Right. If you're just a junkie and you're just panhandling, that's the part where we need to go and we need to see if we can help these people. And I think it's really important that we start to think about you know, when people talk about well, marijuana as a gateway drug, I'm like, maybe the criminal justice, justice system, system is the gateway, gateway drug. drug. You I know, agree. people get caught up in the system and then everything just piles on. It's a little bit like when someone doesn't have money and a bank will give you overdraft fees for, yeah. for overdrawing your account. And, now you're and I'm like, overdraw. but I didn't have the money to start with. So now you're punishing me right. by saying, give me more money. Right. So all you're doing is you're creating a poverty trap for this person. And I think with the criminal justice system, that's what we've done. So when people look at the bail reform stuff, they're criticizing or not analyzing the issue exactly the way they should. I agree. Um, so, yes, you should vote. <laughs> <laughs> Get polls, out of vote. Polls are open today <laughs> until 7 p.m. Um, if you're not sure where you vote, because we have 12 polling locations throughout the city, you can go to manchesternh.gov forward slash, that's the uphill one, um, forward slash city clerk, and then scroll down, you'll see polling locations, and you can find out there, or you can type in your address there, and it'll tell you what ward you live in. There's no, no good reason not to vote. I don't care what anybody says, even if you don't think it's a super important election. So... I did look at um, Manchester Inklink had um, a voter's guide, so I knew that that wasn't um, you know necessarily partisan or anything. Um, because even though they don't tell you which party people belong to, all elections are partisan. That's just reality. Um, so I did find it interesting because I think this, the tax cap and priorities and what people think their priorities are do play into... I think what people should know before they fill in the dot for somebody on the ballot. And I want to say this. There's also the shenanigans of how people word things. Well, well I respect the tax cap yeah, as currently matter. stated when their own voting records are like, no, you, you don't. don't. Right. I you're lying. Like, you're literally lying um, in this response. And I'm like, sack up, man. Just, just say, say you're going to do it. If you don't support, I mean, some of these candidates clearly did. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, but I also but think people should But then you know what know. you're voting right. for. Um, so I did pr print out things in my printer. It's odd the way this was supposed to be printer friendly and I missed pieces. So <laughs> sorry. Um, but in the alderman at large race, there are two seats that we ultimately fill. So that means there will be four candidates out of the six making it through the primary later today. Um, Katie DeRocher, who's currently on the school committee, um, just a couple tidbits, and I realized you can totally know this, I am partisan, I am pro-limited <laughs> pro government, I'm a Republican, there's no secret about that. A um, couple quick things that I picked up out of her qualifications. Um, she says a response to solving the problem um, on the school committee, I guess, uh, problem solving needs to be intellectually, thoughtfully, and fiscally responsible. That sounds good. And then in the next section, she says, in order to effectively run the city, I would support a tax cap override. So fiscally responsible does not mean live within your means. 
Right. And and I think one of the things we have talked about in the past is this sort of idea of, you know, if there was a good reason to override the there, cap that actually should. involved um, increased services or something or that we as, as our taxpayers or we right. knew it was this particular project. But what we're currently seeing is we're seeing tax overrides that are purely going to salaries yep. and, and to increased are- spending mostly for bureaucracies in schools. Uh, we know that in the schools, the spending has gone up 40 percent and the outcomes and actual results have dropped 40 percent well, uh, so so when we talk about hey the tax cap it's like look we're not being unreasonable we believe that yes the tax cap is a way to tell people you know what we need to live within our means maybe we need to compromise much like we do on any household yep. budget but you know so so when you hear these things about these candidates um if their solutions aren't involving like something new, yeah. if it's just like, oh, we should override the tax gap yeah, to give people solu- raises, right. Right. that's not a good reason. So the next person on this list was Kathleen Farley. Um, she, I believe, is Mike Farley's wife. I believe she is She is an undeclared voter. Uh, Katie DeRochers is a Democrat. Um, what jumped out at me is she says she voted against the tax cap in 2009 so that puts it pretty simple where she's gonna lie um interestingly enough she manages a dental office which good for her but she says the city like any business should run in budget and i thought oh hard stop the city is not a business we do not sell a widget we tax people and spend it on supposed services (laughs) so please stop saying we should run the city like a business Well, or if we run the city like a business, which I would love to see, let's incorporate it. Let's make all the services private so that the people who work for the city aren't making vastly, vastly higher amounts of money than you would in the private sector. To think that we should budget like a business, and she talks about according to revenues and expenditures, it's like, wait, wait, wait. There are some revenues in the city. If you, you know, register your car, there's a fee there. And if you do that, those are actual revenues. My tax money that you take from me, whether I want you to or not, should not be thought of as if we've sold a widget and that's the rev- the profit from it. Um, so that's that's that candidate. Then we jump on to John Hopwood. John Hopwood lives in my ward. Um, he is a Democrat. He has a very lengthy um, a thing in this page, like three pages. What struck... Um, he does say he believes in overriding the spending cap to properly pay vital city personnel such as police and teachers in a, and that it's a moral imperative because apparently we don't pay them now. Okay. Okay. Um, he also talks about how wonderful Granite Hammer it was, which is ironic because I think everybody in Concord that oh, Granite kind of Hammer like- did not work well. It was not a good use of money. And I think even the police have acknowledged it really wasn't the best use of oh, money. Oh, well, you know what? I... I have a podcast called Told You So, <laughs> and I'm telling you folks so that when Granite came, Hammer came out and I was the only one writing op-eds and letters to the editor yep. saying this is like the worst possible yep. thing we could be doing, lo and behold, it wasn't a good thing. Told you so. Yep. Um, he also says our schools were hurt by poor policy making by tax cap purists, meaning they people who supported the cap. Are they purists? Is that how that means? You, that you're oh, actually oh, following Oh, because the you know what? A, a, uh, so, so here's the other muddled <laughs> thinking. So either you have a tax cap. Or you don't. Or you don't. Like, it can't be like, eh, well, we have the same, but we don't really have to stick to the budget. Right. Because, we can say we know, like the tax we cap. Like we, we respect the tax cap. But then I'm going to override it and spend the money anyways, because then I can say I respected the tax cap, but, you know, we had to do it. I respect so many people. Um, And and then he goes in, I mean, (laughs) literally, he's got tons of moratorium on the rehab industry reform. I mean, he just wants to change everything. But then he gets down to city charter reform. And I do think there are some areas of the city charter that could use some improvement. Um, Not to be confused with the school committee, school charter committee, that we're going to elect, which you're running for I in am. November. Vote for Carla um, Garrick. Where I wholeheartedly believe the goal behind that is to make the Manchester School District autonomous from the aldermen and a taxing authority so you can get two special tax bills. Um, but what, it, ironically, I was in Rhode Island and I happened to see a p- campaign sign for a Ward 10 in, Rhode, in Providence, <laughs> which I thought was just ironic. And it was funny because I thought it was interesting that they're tagline said 
ending corruption and something. And it was like, wow, it's pretty bad when you got to put ending corruption on your campaign right. signs. But then when I was reading John Hopwood's thing, um, he thinks ch city charter reform need to promote democracy and ending corruption. So apparently I just was like, oh, okay. Oh, if, if, if by corruption he means uh, people who vote against the conflict of interest policy well, yeah. by voting for their own uh, family and but friends. But he would like to take I'm our, sure that's not our what current means. system <laughs> of 12 ward aldermen, two aldermen at large, and a mayor. Oh, um, is he the boroughs guy? He would like to make re-change everything. We're going to have a city council and a city manager and five at-large aldermen who will serve like an executive council and the mayor who doesn't actually have any so, power. So is this a, like a model that's set up, say, on Chicago? I don't know, or but like it, one the of boroughs thing, what I thought was interesting places. is he talks about five boroughs and how they're... Um, Oh, this they is probably Agenda 21 The boroughs model. would be, uh, they would be uh, touching, you know, like they would make sense. And I thought, and how's that going to work on the West Side? Because we, what are we going to only have two, we're going to become one borough and we only become one fifth of the city? I don't know, but but I would rather just be like, why don't we have Manchester and West Manchester? Well, and I agree. We and that's just... what I made me think. I'm like, how about, if you want, he does talk about how the boroughs could secede. Okay, well, the boroughs could probably do that now without having to be called boroughs. But it did, uh, I mean, like, he wants the five member aldermen. I, uh, it was very confusing. The the mayor would be the top vote getter out of the aldermen. So I guess that makes Dan O'Neill the mayor by default. <laughs> I don't and know. then <laughs> they would have to meet weekly with the city manager and approve all expenditures over $10,000. And I'm like, $10,000 is a pretty low bar for every expenditure although doesn't the executive council on the state level i think right, it's also state, five or ten thousand but the state 10, 000, doesn't do which i kind of like. have day in day out i don't think they have the same day in day out expenses i don't know Maybe. it just was like wow this is a whole lot of change so if you want total chaos in manchester for the next 20 years this is the way i'm looking for new ideas but not crazy ones. um <laughs> will infantine is a republican um his he supports the tax cap will not override it to pay for normally op normal operating costs of the city. Straightforward. Um, he's a business owner. He w he was a state legislator for 14 years. I've known Will for years. A great guy. Um, you know, common sense, business brain, won't spend your money like a drunken sailor. Um, Joe Lavasser, also a Republican. Um, generally says he'll support the tax cap unless there's um, over... Concerns affecting public safety um, or outside the boundaries for which the tax cap was implemented. I think the tax cap was implemented to, to cap to taxes. Be, be a boundary. Um, but that's okay. Sure. He's a Republican. Dan O'Neill, like I said earlier, um, he says he supported an override to maintain city services and for our school district when additional revenues are available. No, actually, he's overrode whether the ve revenues were available or not. So, like you said, a little disingenuous. So those are your aldermen at large candidates. So obviously, if I'm when so I... So Will, Will and Joe, Joe are my takes. Um, they're the only two that say that they will... Respect, the, respect tax the tax cap, cap. Um, which certainly, if you're on a fixed income, should be a big deal for right. you. You know, if you're like, older, if you're a young family with kids, and you, you know, you're. I mean, honestly, you're, it should be a big deal for all of us, right? Because I, the question is, like, when they take more money, I'm like, what are they doing? What am I getting, getting. for it? Like, I don't feel know, like I'm my getting more. Fixed? No, I mean, my property taxes at my Parker Street house—they've gone up thousands of dollars wow. since I bought that house, and. I don't have, I mean, they still only pick the trash up once a week. I mean, you know? I'm, I'm spending my weekends picking up the trash, That's too. Right. That's so right. <laughs> I'm really um, like, oh. The, okay, so now I was going to talk about school committee, but I know we'll run out of time. So today, if you're watching this live on Facebook, um, you still have time to get out a vote. we got about 10 minutes that so we can talk more. Um, might as well talk about the mayor's race. You've got incumbent Joyce Craig. Um, who is a Democrat, who used to be an alderman, who overrode the tax cap and said we can't keep kicking the can down the road. Yet we did just keep kicking the can down the road. Her, um, She did not veto their override, so she had no intention of su supporting the tax or spending cap this year while she was is mayor. Um, you have Glenn Olette, who... Um, is colorful. He's, he's sort of just a, a he's, regular... He's like, just a regular guy. Every year. Um, does he you know, run every time? Like Looking at the priorities uh, of these people, Joyce's priorities more talk about what she th claims has happened in the first year and a half. 
Um, she does say she, we need to seek out new funding opportunities for our students, which to me goes ching, ching, ching. Where can we get more of your tax dollars from? Um, she really doesn't say a whole lot of anything. Um, and Glenn, Glenn has priorities. He wants us to be open and transparent, clean up the downtown, repair the Veterans Park public bathrooms, all things that everybody in Manchester is truly concerned about. Um, he also would like to create a $100,000 project in each ward through a citizens committee. I'm not really sure. That's what aldermen should, I mean, if there's something that needs to be done in the ward, that's the job of the alderman, I think. Um, create a part-time police and fire reserve to reduce overtime expenses. Um, sell the city school condo on the west side for 1.8 to 2 million and use the money to pay the bond. I, I don't know. It just sounds like stuff that I'm like, oh, it's not really, those are not big, big ideas. Um, Victoria is the Republican candidate, Victoria Sullivan. Um, not your typical city government candidate, especially somebody running for mayor. Uh, Victoria has been a state rep and she was in leadership up at the state house when she was over there. She's worked um, and currently works, I think, with SNU or somebody, maybe UNH, um, on early childhood education things because she passed a bill that said kindergarten had to be play-based. So now we have to train teachers how to teach kindergarten, I guess, and that's what she <laughs> does. Like, Here's how you teach play. You let you them play. You tell kids that there is an imagination corner like, and that they have to go to the imagination <laughs> corner. And use her imaginations. And, and then they learn. below. Um, she is a mom. Her husband works so that she can stay home and raise her boys. Um, you know, just a typical middle class, blue collar family, which is an interesting perspective when you think about the, like, the tax cap. You know, not that I, I'm a social, you know, like I'm not pitting one social class against the other. Oh, but Joyce Craig lives up in the North End. Everybody who doesn't live in the North End Thanks the people in the North End don't care about anything other than the North End. I mean, that's just the general gist of things. We say it on the West Side all the time. Well, the North End gets it, but we don't get it. Um, you know, Victoria's priority, she says, fight crime, resolve the issues of homelessness. Okay, everybody's saying that. Um, keep taxes low and spending You low. know what? I want to say you something. You know, there's a priority. Can I say, do you know on on uh, Second Street where they raised the buildings to put in, it looks like it's a halfway home oh, or a, on South, oh, sorry, on Main South Street. Main. South yes, Main. It's right across yep. from where I work. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was driving by there the other day and it occurred to me. So the story is like we, we, we're creating this culture of resentment. Yep then I think we really need to think about, and I think it's because government's too big, yep. right? So everyone's like, man, you're taking my money and I'm so mad about something, yep. right? So I drove by there actually on the way to your house the other day. And I saw that there was, uh, someone had like a barbecue yeah. outside and yep. some chairs They're and chairs. whatever. And I had an immediate visceral negative reaction. And I was like, man, I'm paying all this money, my, 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 right? And then I had to stop myself and just like, check in a little bit with like, you know, the decent part of all mm -hmm. of us, right? And I was like, there was this study that they did, it's called the Rat Park Theory, okay. right? So basically, um, when they look at addiction, they say, why is it that certain people can use opioids? Like grandma goes and gets a hip replacement, and have she a goes problem. to the hospital, she comes home, yep. and she's not a junkie in two right. weeks, right? And it's because grandma has a support structure, and she has she a loving family, get, right. you know, like she has a real job, yep. whatever, right? So what happens with a lot of people when they get into this cycle of misuse, it's like they, 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 um, they've broken their societal sort of chains and stuff, right? So as I was driving by and I look at this, this place and I'm all mad because I'm like, what? They're just like out there partying, you know? <laughs> wow, you're having a barbecue and your tent chairs and you're camping. And, and then I was like, we should be so happy for these people. Yep. If you have made it that far, yep. right? We raised the place, we paid the money, we yep. built this place, we are all subsidizing these people's yes, recovery, we right? We're paying for this. And so with that theory of if you can create a healthy social structure and environment. So the fact that that person has a barbecue out there and has seats and has three right, people who have, have come a semi -normal to life. hang out with them is a indication of actual recovery. And those are the things. Like if you see someone who's actually getting better because they are creating a social milieu and friends and stuff, we should encourage that. Right. Well, that's like, as we were coming into the show today, we were talking about, you know, I know in one something Glenn talks about 
people working minimum wage jobs, you know, like why the homeless can't get out of homelessness. And, you know, if you work three minimum wage jobs, well, reality is in New Hampshire, people are not working minimum wage jobs. And you were saying that some diner up in the North Country that's been there for like 60 years is going to have to close because they literally cannot find staff. You know, and uh, there's rest, there are places in Manchester that in the past 12 months, Dan and I have gone to, and there's a note that says, I'm sorry, we're temporarily closed because we can't find anybody to work. There are jobs out there. They are not the most glamorous jobs out there. But like you said, you know what? And you walk into the drugstore and there's the guy and maybe he's got the big face tattoo and you wonder, well, that wasn't maybe the best choice <laughs> for your future. But he's working a cashier's job at the drugstore. And you know what? Good for, good on him. I for, have so much respect for that kind of yeah. stuff. But really, I just, I, I think I'm mentioning it because I think, you know, sometimes we, we're so caught up in this partisanship yeah. and we're so caught up in, in pitting people against each other and these teams and all of that. And, oh, you're taking my money and you're doing stuff well, that we forget. You know what? We're all just human beings. That's right. And we are really just, everyone is trying to work towards solutions. Right. Like, no one's the big bad evil. No. And really, the, the part where we need to stop is just to say, we can't just keep taking these people's money and and, dip- and, and wasting it here. Like, we have to come up with a better model. Yeah. And these people over here need to be encouraged to, to right. yeah like like let's right. create they, they, that well, let's, the, the what is it the, rising the tide tides lift all the, boats or yeah, whatever right that should boats. be the goal not yeah. to just put another boat in and let everybody climb in it and then and you then guys keep make growing. it the titanic right it's supposed to be like let's all help each other so for me it was really i'm just sharing it because it was like a real reality check moment for me where i was like we've got to not feed into this culture of resentment right. because um, because no one wins in that scenario. Right. And so I, I guess I just wanted to share that and be like, you know, let's not be mean That's right. <laughs> to each other, but um, but vote for all our candidates. Vote for all my candidates. <laughs> Everybody that I name, I'm going to tell you real quick, like, um, I'll tell you how I would vote. If I'm um, for mayor, I'm obviously voting for Victoria Sullivan. She's the only one who I actually believe will uphold the tax cap. And I think it's it, she's a good example of somebody with a, a new perspective, not just the same old, same old. Um, so Victoria Sullivan for mayor. Um, in the alderman at large race, I will vote for Will Infantina and Joe Lavasser. Um, I think those two are the two that are most likely to um, watch out for my my money and do a good job there. Um, school committee at large, I'd probably be voting for Jason Hodgson and Joe Lachance just because I like them. I think they're both good guys um, with a lot of you know depth of knowledge and um, business experience and things like that. Um, on the if I had a an alderman race. If I lived in Ward 6, there is not a doubt in my mind that I'd be voting for John DePietro for school board. Oh, yeah. He is the one guy who has all the data and all the facts. He's a really he's a smart worker. Guy. And he's got kids. And he's just really, really good. So that's John DePietro for school committee in Ward 6. Ward 7, I would be voting for Ross Terrio for alderman. Um, and in Ward 11, I would be casting my alderman vote for Andre Rosa. Yeah, I like I like his creativity. Oh, I, I, yeah. I know he's a smart guy. I know he would bring new ideas. Um, it's definitely not the same old vanilla candidate over there when you vote for Andre. So get out in Ward 11 and vote for Andre Rosa. Um, and, and no matter where you vote, vote for Victoria Sullivan. And that's all we got. We've got to wrap it up. If you're seeing this and it's not Tuesday, you missed voting. If you're seeing this live on Facebook, get out and vote. Support the tax cap. I just told you who those candidates were. Do your job. Go vote. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Peace out.